Dear colleagues, let us start our round table today. Energy reform is one of the most difficult reforms in all the countries because the transition to market in the sphere of gas and uh, electricity requires uh, from people, from customers, to be ready to pay market prices for gas and electricity. Also, the market requires payment discipline for goods, for services, fair market prices should be paid. At the same time, the issue of payment discipline is always painful in Ukraine because not all people can pay even if they want to pay. Some people are not able to pay this high price for electricity or gas. And then it is a task for the state how to correctly build the policy of protection of such consumers, how to correctly protect them in order not to block the development of the market and from the other side to provide the opportunity to people to use goods and services in the market of energy. This policy is also difficult because when you try to defend a customer, you need to clearly understand and identify who you defend and to verify these people and to get convinced that this money is it goes to the people that really needs it. And the government made some steps in this direction. And yesterday there was an important event, the announcement of monetization of subsidies. And I believe that the ministry, uh, my colleagues from the ministry will tell you more about it. And this round table is dedicated to the harmonization of further policy of Ukrainian government. Uh, to protect customers in energy sector and to harmonize this policy with the EU policy. And the, in the EU and in Ukraine, there are vulnerable customers, and uh, we all need policy to protect these people. So this policy should be harmonized simultaneously. And I would like to give the floor to our speakers. And uh, I would like to give the floor to Grigoria Savoy head of trade unions of Ukraine, and I would like to remind you that uh, this uh, event is held by Ukraine EU uh, support uh, uh, the uh, energy, uh, this energy um, and by civil uh, society groups in the sphere of energy. Um, thank you, Alena. First of all, I would like to address my colleagues and to say that uh, we discuss this problem in the framework of uh, civil society platform for a long time and uh, we had intentions to provide a draft for one of the meetings uh, to present it at the platform in order that the uh, EU committee and uh, civil society of Ukraine uh, to be able to share their opinion and uh, to provide their views how to resolve this acute problem. Because we believe that this is an important problem for each Ukrainian family. And for us as trade unions, for us this is a really important problem. We re represent many employees in Ukraine and, uh, of course, their level of income should harmonize with prices and uh, costs uh, for energy uh, in order not to make them poorer, in order that they were able to get access to energy supplies. So openly speaking, uh, we really wanted to discuss this problem during this round table in order to continue now our work in this area, because we understand that this topic will be important for many years. And we should see how these problems are resolved in other countries. And uh, 
uh, after conclusion of the association agreement, we have the vector with joint third energy package. And in Europe, they work according to the fourth package. And we should elaborate the mechanisms to protect our consumers. So we should guarantee the opportunity of access to energy. Uh, sources and uh, the opportunities for heating of uh, housing and also the, the ability uh, to get good connection and uh, not be disconnected in force mature circumstances. And uh, these are really important issues for us. My colleagues remember uh, that uh, one of the requirements of all Ukrainian actions in October last year uh, was to stop the rise of prices. The motto was good, but we do not have proper decision. Uh, the decision was negative because the algorithm that we have, the connection, uh, and uh, now we have work. We continue our work. We try to search compromise, and uh, we believe that there are three factors that influence access to energy. Supply, this is the level of income of population, and this is a necessary condition. Second, the price, they should be moderate, and the third is energy efficiency of houses, buildings, where you can save properly. So there are three factors that can help to resolve this problem about the level of income. So we have good rate, the average salary raised during three years. So the dynamics was about 25 this year, 20% of the rise of average salary. It looks rather good, but this is an average uh, calculation. So we should take into account that half of employees that, who work in real sectors, uh, the, this is these are budget workers, and uh, their average is really low. That's why these are not very good indicators. So uh, for trade unions, uh, the rise of the salary is really important, and uh, we should uh, regulate these issues through agreements and other forms, and uh, we will continue active work in this area about influence on the prices. We should start. Uh, it it is uh, next to impossible to stop inflation and the rise of pr uh, rises, and uh, uh, there are monopolies in the markets. Uh, uh, and how to demonopolize these markets and to provide uh, free choice for consumers? And we should work in this area in order to prevent excessive uh, tariffs. Uh, and we see the latest decision. Uh, by the Supreme Court to cancel the provision of the Cabinet of Ministers, and then they reinstated uh, uh, this decision. Uh, I am speaking about the gas sector. And uh, we understand that the struggle uh, is really tough. Uh, and uh, um, also, uh, there is information that in the world, uh, we, uh, poverty is present throughout the world, but the scope is different. More than one billion people in the world do not have access, even access, to electricity, not saying proper supply for their purposes. And uh, this is the world problem, uh, including uh, uh, the EU and uh, our colleagues who came here um, from uh, Europe, from the Federation of uh, um, working with customers, we hope that they will help us to resolve these problems. This is an important topic, and we believe that today's discussion will uh, lay the way for further work in this area, because once again, I would like to stress that uh, this is about all Ukrainian families, uh, families and we, uh, civil society, we should be active participants of this process. And, uh, of course, we should be opponents in case uh, the system works with uh, minus of, um, and not for the benefit of people. Thank you. Now the floor is given to Tatiana Golubenka, the Ministry of Social Policy. 
Tatiana, could you please tell us about all the news that happened and uh, recently and what it means for further policy in the social sphere? Good afternoon, dear colleagues. With the view to protect vulnerable categories and to provide them proper services, we have subsidy programs that in operation since 1995. And it provides help to people, to vulnerable categories of population. It is understandable that during this time, during 20 years, this program changed many times, depending on the time and problems, and this is natural. In 2018, we had many changes. First, from the start of the year, I will be brief about 2018. From the start of the year, clearing set-offs were cancelled uh, for these uh, subsidies, and to, um, the subsidies were provided in such a way they decreased the prices for sub some consumers, and this money is provided to the accounts of some organizations. This was clearing before 2018. Uh, so the organization paid uh, taxes, and there were some uh, clearing operations. Uh, starting 2018, organizations started to pay money for uh, these uh, subsidies and benefits, and then 2018 also. The program changed. Uh, the rules for provision of subsidies changed twice. Um, changes were introduced, uh, and uh, in May uh, there was update uh, of the rules for subsidies. And in October, there were changes to this uh, um, document in order to increase the efficiency of this type of help and to uh, increase uh, the focus on. Uh, these categories, these families who really need assistance. And in 2018, they started to work on the changes and the reforms that are being introduced now in 2019. Uh, in the updated version on um, communal services, it is clearly it clearly states that benefits and some subsidies are provided to people in the form of money, and uh, uh, they are provided directly to the consumers. And uh, this is introduced into action starting 1st of January 2019. And uh, a working group was created, headed by Kubil, and uh, this working group coordinated and, and uh, took decision that monetization should take into account such aspects. First, to make it gradual, to make it step by step, to see how it works on some number of households. And uh, from starting 1st of January, we have modernization, and it is introduced for households that address for subsidies starting this year. In May, they plan to involve to monetization benefits and uh, uh, those households uh, for uh, non-heating period. And in October, all uh, should transfer to uh, monetization, all the households who have the right to get the subsidies. So the issue that was discussed during the meetings of this working group is that there should be target use of this mo money, uh, they should be spent for uh, communal services, and this money should go directly to the enterprises and organizations. And uh, speaking about these main issues, in December, the government adopted uh, 
resolution that uh, introduced starting 1st of January to provide uh, subsidies for housing uh, in the form of money. And it is in effect now, and uh, people get these subsidies according to this mechanism. It is envisaged that, and uh, it is an important aspect that money and the budget program that is envisaged for provision of subsidies in the form of money. This is uh, within the framework of the Minister of Social Policy. Before it was from local budgets, and the main holder was the Ministry of Finance. Says, and now this is Ministry of Social Policy. That's why uh, I would like to speak about the mechanism. Uh, so uh, the appointment is made by uh, local at the local level, and the proper information is provided to, to the Ministry of Social Policy and Financing, uh, and provision of subsidies uh, is uh, carried out at the um, national level. And uh, um, Oshad Bank, the state bank, works in the scheme, and all the mechanisms are elaborated. And the money, uh, they are provide, uh, it is provided by Shed Bank, and uh, uh, the funds from this, uh, uh, and the money will go to the payment of these services, and uh, the uh, rest of this money, um, uh, people will get uh, after the heating period ends. And uh, uh, subsidies are, were provided and are provided according to the social norms. They are established based on monitoring of the consumption of services. And uh, based on this, uh, the subsidies are calculated. Until 2019, unused funds, unused subsidies went back to the budget. And after heating season, the enterprise analyzed what funds were used, and this money, unused money, returned to the budget. And uh, the new mechanism that is introduced that in January, this money uh, will be used by people, this saved money uh, will be used to, as at their own discretion. So this will improve energy efficiency because uh, uh, people didn't get money and they just used uh, the norm because state pays for them. And uh, this mechanism, it will stimulate the consumers for to energy efficiency and it will stimulate uh, um, savings in energy. And this mechanism, uh, it is criticized. Because the money is not provided to people directly, and at the initiative of the president, uh, alternative mechanism was elaborated that envisages payment of money directly to people. And the uh, resolution was adopted at the meeting of the government. So what it envisages? They will start to pay money in March. They will pay subsidy for February. And in uh, March, they will pay for February. And uh, what it envisages. Parallel in March, there will be two mechanisms in place. It is uh, uh, households uh, that join in January, they uh, will get, uh, uh, so this money, the, the mechanism that will work starting March, uh, it will cover those households to which the subsidies was allocated for the heating season starting uh, October and uh, December. So we analyzed the number of such households. This is about 
seven million households. So in March, they will get this money. Also, we analyzed how to pay money to people because we do not have data in our database because we didn't need it before where to pay this money and the decision was taken we pay we will pay to patients or to pensioners uh, and we will do it in a way how they get pensions uh, about 70 percent of those of 3.7 million are pensioners so they will get the um, uh, money and uh, through and the pension fund was informed about it, and we took the data about December, and uh, we uh, understand how to provide this information to the pension fund in order to make these payments. So this payment is, uh, they will get this payment together with the pension. So part of this money will go to the relevant banks and part of the money will go through the post office. And those who do not get pensions, those households, they will be paid through a shit bank. It has such a system of money transfers. It is called Quick Copec and people may address any post, uh, uh, mail post, and they can get money there. So previously we had one order, now we have uh, another. So people will get information, they will have information notices, uh, and uh, these notices will contain what money they will get and how they can get it through shit bank or other means. and. Uh, this money and they should pay uh, communal services using this money because if there is indebtedness uh, the subsidy won't be provided in the next period so in such a way it will be interesting to see payment discipline and we will see how people will pay and this will be uh, done till the end of the heating season and on the result we will see what mechanism is more efficient and what will we do next. Uh, I propose that first uh, we uh, show presentations and then we will give uh, the floor to Ms. Tatiana, we give the floor to Ms. Ruta, a group of support uh, to Ukraine and the EU Ukraine. Uh, uh, who need headphones, you can get them, uh, you can get your headsets uh, and the uh, my name is Ruta Balthaus. I work in the European Commission in Brussels, but I'm uh, every second week in Ukraine, so that uh, I follow closely uh, all the processes and issues and discussions also uh, in Ukraine, including on, on what's going on in the energy sector and uh, all the actual discussions around uh, energy poverty, prices, uh, tariffs, uh, and so on. Uh, I would like just to give you a short overview of what is going on in, 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 in European Union, but of course, energy poverty, it is not Ukraine phenomena, it's not European phenomena, it's a global phenomena. However, it has several dimensions. It's not only about how much it costs, it's not about affordability, it's also about access at all. 
to have, for example, electricity, or not to have electricity, uh, to have electricity at all times, uh, not to choose between what uh, to use electricity for heating uh, water or for cooking or for uh, just making something uh, else. So it's about the quality, availability. It's also access to modern energy because, for example, in other parts of the world, so it's not only about access to electricity, it's about access to modern energy on electricity because modern fo forms of electricity are also cheaper and more efficient, for example. And that is exactly also in other regions uh, in, 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 in the world. Uh, I work in energy sector, but what I would like to say is that it's when it comes to the EU energy policy, I think that the core element is it's about that all policies are around consumers. And that is something which all our policies and legislation are designed to, su to, 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 to support the consumers. Um, So that is something what the energy union as such inside the European Union is uh, rather new, but the policy is old since the uh, 80s, beginning of the 90s. All the what has been necessary it was to help the people to have this energy, to have this uh, avoid all the issues around affordability and quality was to focus on how to help the consumers and how to protect the consumers. Uh, that was something very, very important element in uh, this process was uh, when the uh, uh, market reform package was adopted in 2009. So that was something which is also where it's particularly also uh, interesting for Ukraine because when it, you see uh, in the framework of the association agreement with, with, with the, the EU, uh, very strong focus is given to energy sector reform. So And that was also in the EU since 2009. It was not only about how to uh, provide the energy sector, but also for that, how to make it more efficient, how to demonopolize, how to give the rights to the consumers to get the information, how to get them uh, possibility to have impact on what they are doing, and also to make uh, to change something, to have impact on that, and also to protect them. So already in 2009, there were this at least two points for consumer rights, possibility to switch, uh, to have a full metering data, to access to metering data, also to protection including like uh, ombudsman or, or dispute settlement and so on. But what is of course when it comes to energy poverty, that was also the time when the discussions were very, very intensive. What is it, energy poverty? And uh, what to do about it? Is it social policy? Is it energy policy? So if only the energy policy should do something, or uh, which are the most appropriate levels? But it was clear that it was out of the question that you have to reform the energy sector. And then, of course, during this process, you have to have full transparency, access to data, but also to protect vulnerable consumers. Of course, vulnerable consumers, you have specific information uh, situation in each and every country. It's not all about, only about uh, how much money is, is there, what are the salaries, which is a very important aspect, but not the only one, but also how the approaches, how to, uh, how to uh, uh, define who is vulnerable and how to protect are really specific for each and every country. What is, of course, in, uh, common that the EU legislation obliges member states really to define who is vulnerable and also if there's a, to uh, assess the situation and to help where it is necessary. For example, vulnerable, it can be poor, it can be energy poor, but it can be also someone who cannot help uh, it, uh, himself or herself. So it's not only about money. And this is the, the different from member state to the member state. What we have learned a lot and I think the consumers have got a lot of rights and possibilities to protect themselves. Also, these uh, vulnerable consumers are uh, produ uh, protected. But our lessons learned since 2009 were that actually we do not have enough data. 
and we have such a variety of different approaches that it's difficult to even to define what is uh, energy poverty. And that was something which was changed also now with the uh, new uh, package of uh, different uh, regulations and directives which were called as a clean energy package. Electricity Directive, Energy Efficiency Directive, uh, Renewable Energy Directive, uh, Governance Directives, which were a full package which were just adopted last year. Uh, and uh, it is about the full scale of uh, uh, different, uh, so that uh, as a complex way how to protect the consumers. In this slide, you can see very little, but I th I'm pretty sure that you have, will have this slide, is how different are the policies in different member states. You have, for example, consumers which are protected whole year long. There are some who are just uh, doing certain times. Uh, so uh, at critical times like in winter, so that you have a, uh, have a, uh, uh, basic services, you have it. You have different uh, uh, ideas how to do it, advanced payments, uh, possibility to inform and to help people uh, who are in difficulties to pay so that they are not disconnected. Also, uh, uh, or how to uh, uh, settle the debt. How, what are the times uh, to give people before they uh, before they are disconnected and so on? This variety of measures, and the member states were very very keen to keep their flexibility to, to see how to take their own country, specific specificities of each country into account. Also, when they negotiated with the Commission and European Parliament, also the new package which will be valid until 2030. So, and that, if you look at the basic amendments, I think the new elements which were added, so even farther to those elements where the consumer to give the rights already today, there were far the empowerment of the consumers. So to participate in the market, to choose where they get the energy from, even to, con uh, to produce themselves, or to make communities to produce energy for themselves. The other was, of course, also this better information including full transparency on the costs, prices, comparisons, suppliers, price calculators, and so on. For example, uh, price calculation tools are now obligatory, while it was already voluntary and uh, plenty available until today, but something they which have made been uh, obligatory at the whole EU level. And of course, when it comes to the protection of the consumers, I think that has been uh, further strengthened as well. Uh, <clears throat> for example, also that I think that when it comes, uh, that's something which uh, sounds uh, 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 funny, but uh, protection of our consumer data. I think until to, uh, to, uh, today, the main idea was metering, how I can get the full metering and full access to my consumption data and a possibility to, 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 to change something about it. But now, of course, in the times, at times of internet and all this uh, data, already this uh, issue of protection of my data, so of the consumer's data, so that they are not spread around, uh, that is a, another issue which came across and now it's implemented, uh, also incorporated in the new legislation. I think this is something which is also small, but I think that what is new is now that following all the experiences and lessons learned at the EU level, so now we have these regulations in the, at the EU level, of course it is subject to implementation by the member states, but that is something that we have a common uh, agreement about what, uh, how to describe energy poverty. So and you see this is about uh, uh, access and affordability to basic uh, energy needs to have this adequate uh, um, warmth, cooling, lightning, so and to just to have the also uh, basic uh, electricity uh, appliances uh, 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 working. And of course, what is very important is that also to come to the that member states that are obliged to assess energy poverty that different ways have to do it, but now it's also to set the criteria how to assess it. And also those member states which uh, also have not yet uh, developed their national plans on how to address energy poverty, they have to do it now. And the same is also how to measure it. What are the criteria how to measure it? It's not only how to define, but also how to measure it. And with the work there was uh, such a criteria, and also to report. 
So monitor, report. These are now real obligations. Some of them are directly applicable in the member states in, via regulation. And of course, what was already mentioned here before, that uh, also in energy efficiency, it is something, one of the measures where it's seen that it's, in a, it's a definitely a long-term solution and also the possibility not only to save themselves, but also to help to energy investments in energy efficiency. Just to mention that, of course, if you invest in energy efficiency, it's the fastest way to save energy. I think that is a slogan in the EU that uh, the, the, uh, the cheapest energies you do not spend. But each uh, euro investors in isolation of district heating infrastructure or uh, deep renovation of uh, houses, not only exchange of windows, gives you immediately back real savings. Some of them, like uh, deep renovation, takes time, but this is something where the consumers normally cannot have their own impact on how to, to, to uh, save the energy, but where you have uh, something which gives to everybody, particularly in multi-apartment buildings and those when, 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 when they stick heating uh, infrastructure connected to them. And you have it immediately, effects which are working for, for people. Something which is, I think I would really invite you to look at EU Energy Observatory. So this is a, a supporting instrument which have been created by European Commission as a result of uh, this issue which we have realized that we do not have data, we do not have enough research, we do not have enough best experiences exchange and also do not have enough exchanges between different actors including municipalities, people, researchers. And if you look that this EU Energy Observatory was established, I think, a year ago. But if you look how much input, how much information on already real advices what to do, what has worked, at, even at the, at the level of municipality, a level of countries, uh, or you can really see a lot of information in this EU, uh, EU Energy Observatory. And this is open for everybody. So I was looking for Ukraine members. I haven't found one. So, but I think it's definitely worth it to, to, to use this tool, which is already today internationally used. So, and that is something we were also about how to define what are the indicators. There are different ways how to do it. Is it uh, the, the, the share of expenditure? Is it uh, a possibility or not even so? where the possibility or affordability to keep your home warm and so on. There are several indi indicators how to work it. The Commission is working on a guidance, but of course we have a lot of experience also coming from all the researchers and the communities and people on the ground and the convenience of mayors also via, uh, via uh, observatory and via our pilot projects with convenience of mayors. So one of the elements you can see is uh, what is also th something which is an uh, uh, approach uh, uh, in Ukraine that you see what is the expenditure for, for energy so services. And uh, that is, uh, you, can, you can see the, 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 the picture is, 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 is uh, very uh, diverse also in European Union, not only per country, but also per re energy type. Yeah, you see what is about the oil, gas, electricity. We all forget um, uh, often also that we are all reliant on oil, so uh, uh, which is uh, uh, imported not only in Ukraine but also in, in, in the EU. But you see, in general, of course, it is uh, uh, around 10%. So in some countries where you have the highest level of, of, of expenditure given for, uh, uh, for, for, for energy, average is around 5.5. I know that uh, in Ukraine it's 15%, so to qualify for subsidies. Uh, but uh, I would like to stress that it's extremely important to have the data, to have a clear picture. And that is, in my view, missing in, Euro uh, in Ukraine. So uh, when it comes to energy efficiency, uh, I would like just to once again to, 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 to tell a success story of cooperation between the EU, uh, Ukraine 
and also international financial institutions. So, which is now this energy efficiency fund, which was established also with the contribution from, from Ukraine government in close cooperation with, with us. And this is uh, meant to give this possibility to invest in real savings and to monitor them and to help also in this financing of energy efficiency measures. So, uh, I think that's uh, the slides, but I'm ready to, 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 to reply to all questions. I would also invite you to look at the report of prices and costs in, in, of the European Commission. The latest one is January, and there's a lot of information about what works best, so including all the discussions around the, uh, the, the competition, regulated prices, and if what you see in, in Europe is that if you reform the energy sector, if you ensure competition, then you don't need more energy, uh, energy sector reforms because, you, because they provide the necessary level of support to everybody. But of course, there are vulnerable consumer protection, but that is definitely, uh, for, for me, important to say that without reforms, uh, no affordability can be done irrespectively of, of what you're doing. It just makes the system expensive, ineffective, non-transparent. So in, in any case, therefore, just I would like to invite Ukraine to continue reforms. Now, now, thank you very much. Uh, one more view um, of Mr. Guillaume de Revoux, uh, European uh, Service. Du Rivo, I'm here representing EPSU, EPSU, which is the European Federation of Public Services Unions, and we are a member of the ETUC, which is the European Trade Union Confederations. I'm going uh, today to present uh, our perspective, the uh, perspective from the trade unions uh, at European level, which uh, I must admit is a bit, it's slightly different from the European Commission perspective. And I think then we, c we would have a chance to exchange a bit on this. So um, maybe I'm gonna just ask you for the, uh, the things to just, thank you. Yeah, uh, the presentation is in Ukrainian, so that's a good thing. Not an easy one for me, so I'm going to have to focus on my notes in English. Um, so now today, so just uh, I would like to start by saying a few words uh, and to present a few figures. Because before uh, discussing about energy poverty, I think it's important to go back to the figure and the statistics. Today in Europe, in the EU, we have almost 70, uh, 57 million people who cannot keep their home adequately warm during winter. The same for 104 million people who cannot do the same during summertime. 52 million people facing delays in paying their energy bills. And the last one, 87 million people living in poor quality dwellings. So we can really see it's a very major issue at European level, even in the EU. Uh, especially if we consider that we have something like 500,000 uh, EU citizens in the EU. So it's a very massive issue and uh, we definitely have to uh, find solutions to, uh, to tackle this. Especially if uh, we also look at the people who are affected by energy poverty and mostly the people uh, which are affected by energy poverty of course are the vulnerable ones, but the, the, vulnerable, the most vulnerable part in the vulnerable populations. And of course the elderly, populations, the children's and the single parent uh, households. So definitely there is a big social issues there. I don't know where I have to yeah. Thank you. Yeah, not just, no, if we just uh, missed one, yeah, this one. So I would like to go back to this one. Uh, saying that, but um, that definition has already been given by uh, our colleague uh, from the Ukrainian trade unions, that energy poverty is a combination of different factors. And of course, the first one being the high energy prices, the second one, low incomes, and uh, the first one, inefficient uh, houses. So this is the combination of these three factors which creates lots of energy poverty today in the EU. And as we can see from these figures, which uh, basically comes from a report that is going to be launched soon, I'm going to say a few words about that later on, 
Nowadays, in the EU, we can see that we have a broad uh, variety of situations between countries and the most affected countries by energy poverty being uh, Bulgaria, Hungary, Latvia and Portugal. Uh, for instance, if you look at Portugal and especially Bulgaria, those countries are very much affected by energy poverty because they are actually facing very hot summers and very cold winter. So they are affected all uh, during the, the entire year which is a very worrying situation for the populations there. So as we can see, uh, there is a very uh, uh, big div diversity uh, of situations in the, um, in the EU. So, of course, this is, uh, if we look at the factors that are creating energy poverty, of course, it's a social issue. But on the other hand, it's also a systemic issue, which is very much linked to the EU energy systems. And I'm, by the way, very happy to listen from the European Commission that it has been recognized as such. Uh, which was not the case as far as I know, and uh, this is very good, and maybe I'm going to go back on this uh, later on. So I'm going to be very quick on this one because the colleagues from the European Commission have already said a lot. So that's uh, a bit of background information saying that, of course, uh, energy poverty has been recognized as an issue already by the uh, United Nations and in the uh, EU. Uh, it has been recognized as such as an issue already in 2009 and of course in the latest EU energy package uh, in 2016 in the clean energy package. Um, and of course the uh, awareness of the issue is becoming bigger uh, everywhere in Europe and especially in lots of uh, other bodies and uh, organizations such as of course the unions but lots of NGOs and social movements. So, following the publication by the European Commission of the Clean Energy Package, we, uh, EPSU and its allies at European level identified, of course, energy poverty as a major issue and there were lots of willingness uh, to try to uh, improve the legal provisions that were actually in the Clean Energy uh, Package. So, that the first activities we had and the first thing to establish our position was the publication of this paper, the one you can see and I have a copy here which is a paper that was published together with another organization, which is EAPN, which is the European Anti-Poverty Network. And in that publication, we put forward three ideas. If you really want to be serious about tackling energy poverty, you have to put and to implement at least three key measures. The first one, in our opinion, it's the ban of disconnections. This is the uh, only solution that can really uh, tackle energy poverty if you want to be serious about that. First one. Then, of course, the second one is the price regulations. This is a key aspect uh, from an EPSU perspective, from the union perspective at European level, especially from EPSU, is that the, pr the regulation of prices is very important if you want to lower the prices. We can have debate uh, or some uh, exchange afterwards, but since 20 years at European level, unfortunately, the energy prices for the final consumers have increased and has increased a lot. So we can discuss about the causes uh, and why that phenomena actually happened. But the thing is that if you at some point you want to make sure that everybody can afford energy, you have to somehow regulate the prices. And then, of course, a very important measures, and uh, on that one I think everybody agreed, there is an urgent need to renovate the building stocks in the EU. Uh, this is certainly one of the, one of the major issues, uh, the, quality, the poor quality of drillings, uh, which leads to uh, lots of energy poverty uh, in, the, um, in the EU. So that was the, ba the, the basis for our campaign and for our advocacy activities at European level. And that publication and that very small platform putting together EPSU and the EAPN, so the European Anti-Poverty Networks, led to a broader coalition. Uh, this coalition is the Right to Energy Coalition. Where does it come from? Of course, it comes from to the fact that, of course, the, the, to, the will, to the will to, um, to lobby and to influence the uh, EU energy policy, but also it comes from, um, how can I say, from the idea that if you really want to be also once again serious about energy poverty, you have to put a few elements together. And that idea behind the, this coalition was the idea that if you want to have uh, a just transitions toward a decarbonized economy, if you want to fight energy poverty, you have to put together, of course, unions representing workers, but you also have to put together 
uh, organizations, associations who are fighting against precarity, poverty, and also the green NGOs. And that was the idea of these coalitions to put together uh, in a coalition with three pillars, unions, social and green NGOs. And you can see on the screen the main partners of the coalition. Of course, the unions, EPSU, the uh, European Trade Union Confederations, but also major green NGOs such as Greenpeace, Friend of the Earth, and a, a broad range of other organizations representing families, children, uh, and poor people in the, in the EU. So this, uh, this is a coalition which has been active since now almost two years. And these are the key priorities of the coalition and these are the things we have been advocating for towards the EU decision makers. By the way, this uh, leaflet was published uh, for an event that we organized one year ago in the European Parliament, just before the vote in the European Parliament, and that were the seven key priorities we had and that we tried to put forward uh, before the vote. Of course, the very first measures to implement is a strong definition of energy poverty. And on this, I want to be fair, the uh, European Commission and the EU institutions have made a lot of efforts to have such a definition. Then, once again, one of the key uh, elements to fight energy poverty is to ban this connection. And not only at, criti at critical time, because when you live in uh, precarious situations, it's always a critical time. It's not only during winter time, it could be any, any time. And then a series of most uh, concrete measures. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, one of the most important ones being to renovate homes. And then, of course, also something the colleagues from the European Commission mentioned at some point to support community energy initiatives, uh, which uh, are important. And finally, as a, I would say as a matter of principle, because those things are also important, is to formally recognize in the EU legislations that the access to energy is a right that everybody, each citizen, should have the right to access to energy. So this is also uh, something that, which is extremely important for the coalitions. Uh, on this one, I'm going to be very brief because I know that we are a bit running after time. Uh, and that's what uh, already has been presented by the European Commission. But just maybe uh, the two or three, four bullet points and to think about the logics behind uh, uh, the European Commission solutions to tackle energy poverty. Of course, in the EU institution perspective, but this is the reason why I'm a bit surprised to, uh, to listen to, uh, to what has been said this morning, energy poverty is mainly a social issue. And we do not, of, of course it is a social issue, but it's very much linked also to the way and uh, the structure of the EU energy market, for instance. And this is also something which we would like to put uh, forward. And unfortunately, most of the solutions that have been presented this morning and that, was, that were in the uh, EU energy package are mostly market-based solutions. Meaning that the logic behind is that if, you, if we want to fight energy poverty, let's have more competitions. Let's liberalize the market and let's hollow uh, the consumers to switch suppliers and then the competitions will lead to lower prices. This is the logic behind. And unfortunately, what we can see is that it doesn't work, or at least it has not yet worked. So we can uh, also discuss about this later on, but in our perspective, the, those market-based solutions and the liberalization of the sectors, of the EU uh, energy sectors, is not um, the solution. Uh, of course, that, um, that uh, and also the, the access to information, which is uh, also the, the alpha and the omega uh, very often, from the EU institutions. They are, of course, very important, but you cannot only rely on that kind of measures to fight uh, such uh, a big social issue. But I want to be fair because, I mean, it's always a, a balanced approach. Uh, a few things are good in the, in the package and uh, in, the, in the European Commission's measures. Just sometimes um, we would have liked to see some more ambitious uh, from the EU institutions and especially, once again, uh, when it comes to the ban of these connections. Um, I'm not really good with technology, as you can see, so I'm trying to do my best. I don't know which... Uh, will. Ah, okay. Now, once again, I'm going to... I think I'm not going to go into details of this one, because, once again, uh, those things have been already presented. Uh, just to point out uh, this directive, which is certainly the key one, to uh, one of the key directives to fight uh, energy poverty, 
this is the uh, uh, electricity market design directive because it's going uh, uh, to give the new structure of the market and then the role of consumer of the uh, utilities and and so on so just to conclude uh, those few words i would like to say uh, and to present maybe the, the next activities of the right to energy coalition uh, which is uh, still very active and which will remain very active in the coming months and years because uh, as you can as we said uh, since this morning this is uh, still a very uh, important issue and uh, of course i was already mentioning this but we are going to launch a report to measures and to compare uh, different national situations and by the way i think we will somehow in the future collaborate with the eu energy poverty observatory which is a very good thing and that new report uh, is meant to provide with a, a broad and strong methodology to uh, analyze uh, the uh, uh, and to compare the situations between countries uh, when it comes to the energy poverty and to assess the number of people living in energy poverty and then, of course, advocacy uh, event, lobbying event, and so on. Uh, and with, uh, in a couple of months, uh, the organization of a very large event at uh, Brussels level uh, to put together many organizations uh, and to define what will be our strategy in the future. And I just want to finish with this slide to remind everybody that access to energy is a right and it should be recognized as such, that you should find a way to ban these connections that we should renovate homes and we should also put energy in people's hands and uh, to stop uh, with the idea that uh, we should make profit with, en with uh, energy. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think that uh, our two speakers from the European Union, we felt the level of the discussion in the EU on the energy poverty and uh, what is uh, uh, clearly seen that there are no simple solutions and the discussions should be in place always and details uh, uh, should be conceded not only by uh, executive authorities but also by trade unions. There are no uh, simple uh, solutions not uh, in the, the EU and uh, uh, the same in, in Ukraine. I would like to give uh, uh, the uh, floor to Denise and Tatiana Boyka, Denise Nazarenka and Tatiana Boyka from Dixie group and the Pora uh, about approaches to energy poverty. Good morning everyone. I would like uh, to go back to Ukrainian reality and to provide some answers. It is difficult during the discussion for us as analysts, and we as specialists, we work with the models of markets and legislation that is difficult to speak about social issues because emotions uh, come in and it uh, makes analysis more difficult, but we should discuss these issues, why this problem is so difficult. As my colleague said, it is really difficult to characterize and provide answers, simple answers to really complex issues concerning social sphere and energy sector. And in this context, I won't take the responsibility to speak that this problem is purely social or purely energetic. And uh, the solution is not in one area, not in one sector. In order to speak about the importance of the problem and why we are speaking about it now, we can bring some figures and I would like to s confirm the words of my European colleagues according to different calculations and qualifications, uh, average uh, indicator and uh, energy f uh, um, average figure for 2018, 50 people, million people, about 
10% of European Union live in energy poverty. At the same time, in Ukraine, if we believe the words of proper ministers and if we take for the basis the right to get, to get subsidies for communal services, we see 65 households that get subsidies, and this is 30 million people. So the whole EU is about 500 million people, and they have 50 million who are in energy poverty, and we have 30 million who are in the situation. So uh, this is not comp only European or the Ukrainian problem. This is a global problem, and in many countries there are people who are vulnerable and in energy poverty, and uh, it looks like that European Union that is really centered around uh, customers and socially oriented uh, in comparison with the United States, uh, 10 years starting 2009 till today, they do not have an even definition of the uh, they do not have proper definition, sustainable definition. So um, and uh, we do not we have only a vague definition of uh, uh, vulnerable consumers. That's why we should work more on this. And uh, speaking about energy poverty and how to mitigate or resolve this problem in the future, I fully agree with uh, my colleague, Mr. Guillaume de Rivo. Uh, concerning the fact that there are three main factors. This is high prices for energy overall. Uh, income of population, and also this is the consumption that uh, relates to energy efficiency and saving and houses where people live. Based on this, it is worth to think how to resolve or mitigate this problem about uh, prices for energy resources and energy. I radically disagree with my colleague, Mr. Durivo that state regulation of prices is one of the way out. So the whole, whole uh, history of, sh uh, of Ukraine shows that state regulation of prices, this is the biggest factor uh, of the bad state of the sector and uh, uh, of bad state of calculations and uh, um, bad situation and well-being of people. So there should be market mechanisms in place, they show efficiency, and we, sh we see reduction in consumption, and uh, also increased interest of people to be involved in energy efficiency and energy saving, and we believe that if we g will go along this way, it will be easier, uh, and um, there will be fair pro uh, transparent rules of the game, and uh, the prices will decrease. Uh, so the com competition decreases the prices the best. About the um, incomes of population, their profits. So this decision, uh, this is not. On, uh, this is about the overall national policy, and uh, we should have transparency in the market and in the society on the whole, and. Uh, in this way, we will be able to reach European standards of living, and we have now unique opportunity to go along this way and to raise our level of life in the mid-term prospect. Also, energy efficiency is um, also an important area for the efforts of the state and society, and we should focus the biggest amount of effort on this, because here we have some elaborated methods, and uh, we move along this way, and we have warm credits program, and we launched energy efficiency fund, and uh, according to some research, and uh, um, taking into account common sense, any effort uh, directed at energy efficiency. This is the work for prospects for the future. This is not only paying to some people, that, but the ability to provide some uh, rationale in the uh, area of, um, and it will reduce energy poverty in the future. Going back to Ukrainian reality, and you may see it in our um, 
note uh, to this roundtable our basic recommendations that we provide, taking into account the uh, current state of the problems. It includes uh, the necessity to clearly define energy poverty, to uh, say that this is a really important problem, and this will broaden discussion uh, about how to resolve this problem. Also, uh, targeting and verification are also important, and all the efforts directed to fight energy poverty. This effort take uh, a lot of money from other areas, and we should uh, use this money efficiently and provide it to those who need it, and uh, in this way, the whole system will work more efficiently. Unfortunately, this is not the case now. The system is not optimal. The government works, and uh, through the year, we saw the optimization and verification efforts that were ongoing, and we should continue this effort. The next recommendation is to study EU experience. And uh, they uh, started this way in 2009. And my colleague mentioned the observatory. This is a useful instrument, and uh, many good advice is provided. And uh, while preparing to round table, we used this instrument, and we advise it to local government and the uh, ministries. And uh, also, most important recommendation is monetization of subsidies. And uh, I won't speak about it much. I would like to give the floor to Tatiana Boyka, our partner. And uh, she deals with this issue of monetization of subsidies. And she is going to tell you why it is so important and what criteria should be through which we will um, evaluate whether it is successful or not. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Thank you for giving the, me the floor. I believe that we all said that the country need to defend uh, vulnerable categories, socially vulnerable categories. No one doubts this. But there is also a huge problem in Ukraine. Those who get subsidies, they consume 1.5 or 2 uh, times more of communal services, of gas, of energy supplies, and this is a huge problem. So the system of social protection is in place, but the issue is whether it is efficient concerning stimulating people to change their attitude, their behavior. What happened yesterday, I believe this is a huge victory. And so we are present here, maybe all of us, maybe some people are absent, but four of us, we gather several times. This year we gathered several times, and uh, two or three times we gathered last year. So civil society organizations speak about these issues, and there were big, huge actions of protest. And for two years, there is action from condominium, and thousands of people to and so. Why? Because previous steps that were made, we understand that a lot has been done, and there was a richest of uh, those who get subsidies, and uh, uh, clearing uh, was made, but this was not uh, monetization then. And starting 1st of January 2019, we have this, and the president said it directly, at the meeting, and I was present at this meeting, that uh, we cannot fool people and to call monetization what is not. Because the law of Ukraine and communal services and uh, common sense says that monetization is help of the state to a person, not help to the enterprise that provide uh, communal services to the condominia or other organization. So there are two key parameters, two main tasks. The state believes that condominia uh, should be out of this vicious circle because this is not their function. and. Uh, um, there are just some schemes uh, that are of interest 
to some officials and representatives of uh, water channels, oil gases. They say that they are for monetization, and maybe it could be so if it won't uh, create. Uh, uh, but it will create some obstacles for them. So when people get 100 percent of their bill, they go and ve verify whether the uh, bill is correct. And you know the situation with the natural gas, there were additional coefficients set, or there were norms of consumption that were reduced um, at a, uh, that was backdated. And for example, they had, for example, a bill for 3,000 grivnas, and then people think why they have the bill for 3,000 grivnas. Uh, maybe they opened uh, the window or they turn on the um, uh, battery or they switched on the oven or the stove because they want to increase the temperature in the room to uh, 23 or 24 degrees. Uh, so uh, for a person, so this is the, so the state takes away this natural scheme. Uh, when subsidies were taken care of, or, uh, taken care of, um, of uh, by enterprises, um, and I believe that in prospect it will provide opportunity to create proper market and the development in the sphere of uh, management of um, uh, multi-storied buildings. And I believe in several years we will see this development of, for the consumers. This will form the change of the behavior of the consumer. A person will think what they get, what bills they get, and to form their behavior in the proper way. So those savings, uh, it, they should remain with the person, and then the person will decide whether to warm a house or to have some other energy efficient measures in order to maximally decrease uh, energy consumption and the, and, the res, and in the result to decrease the bill uh, to pay less. So two short comments. Yesterday the resolution was made public and I believe that this is the ground. This is the regulatory act. It was not made public for the previous public discussions, and uh, if someone wants to cancel it in court, they will have grounds to do this. Uh, two biggest negative things, um, concerns, there are two mechanisms. The real monetization for the old holders of the subsidies and for those who addressed in 29 they have the pseudo monetization through Oshad Bank when money will go to the to the accounts of condominia and the um, administrators of services. And also there is a threat that it will be stopped in several months, in three months. But the president said that this is not for three months. This is uh, this will continue forever, and we believe that this should be a serious policy, and uh, um, there should be proper stimulation and the proper work should be carried out with the population in order that this population pay for the services. And uh, we should not return to some half measures, half ideas. We should go along this way. We've chosen and to provide this money to the people. Thank you, Tatiana. Alexei Khabatyuk, uh, Nafta Gas Ukraine State Company. Denise is known as a renowned expert in the sphere of social policy in energy and protection of consumers. So you have a difficult role uh, to integrate what was said today. If you may end to 
tell us whether it is possible to harmonize Ukrainian and European policy of customers' consumer, uh, cons um, uh, protection of consumers. Uh, thank you, Ms. Elena. Thank you for the opportunity to speak here. It is always uh, very pleasant uh, to speak uh, uh, the last because I, then uh, I can finalize, I can uh, re re give resume of uh, all the speeches. Uh, energy community, uh, energy poverty was the main uh, term, its definition was given. Uh, today, the European Commission gave uh, their own uh, definition. Our experts have. Uh, uh, the uh, definition may be in English, energy poverty and fuel poverty could be uh, separate separate different uh, terms. Uh, this is not only prices, uh, this is not only balance of incomes uh, and spendings. Uh, this is a wide uh, uh, concept uh, which includes also accessibility of energy and access to clean resources, green resources. In our situation in Ukraine, um, we are closer to fuel poverty because historical uh, Ukraine uh, has physical access, for example, to electricity. Electricity is provided to all the population. 19 millions uh, of consumers uh, are registered in Ukraine. Uh, it is lacking in Asian countries, uh, in Africa, uh, and it is more, more, more talked about there. Uh, so the role of technologies uh, is high and they can uh, address uh, many, uh, provide solutions to many challenges in Africa, for example, centralized uh, uh, networks uh, uh, could uh, be um, mm, replaced with renewable energy projects. Uh, I would like to come back to Ukraine so we can talk about fuel poverty in Ukraine. It is most close to us as we uh, talk about prices. It, this uh, topic is uh, sore in Ukraine. It is uh, popular among politicians uh, uh, because it gives them the chance to manipulate uh, by uh, citizens uh, by opinions. Uh, I'd like to pay your attention that uh, cheap resource, cheap source, energy sources, uh, it is only perception of richness. If uh, reducing uh, our expenditures uh, uh, why Mm, paying le lower bills, uh, we then only cover energy poverty. In the other situation, when we know how much this resource uh, costs, they come from some place uh, at high prices and someone will pay from, for this. Uh, the same population will pay these high prices, but just some other mechanism will be used. Uh, uh, the competition issue is most uh, important transfer to uh, actual de facto competition which is still lacking in Ukraine at the level of uh, uh, households, consumers. We have competition for legal entities in place for industry, for example, in the gas sector, but we do not have it for households. And there are many comments in this uh, area. This is what concerns legislative regulatory framework. All the legislation available in the gas sector uh, 
uh, it is built so that we still have uh, pr monopolies preserved. As a representative of Naftogaz, uh, I am a representative of monopoly and I am fighting against the monopoly. This is not so because Naftogaz uh, initiated reform uh, not because it wanted to preserve the monopoly, the steps uh, uh, were to disbundle this uh, monopoly, to create uh, uh, the market. Uh, some portion of the work was completed, and this portion, which concerns retail consumers, uh, it has not been completed yet. I heard from trade unions today that on the one hand the prices are low, and on the other hand uh, uh, high competition. All this should be available. How it uh, could happen if prices are low? Uh, it comes from somewhere. If it is uh, not set uh, with the regulator, if it is not fixed price, I think it is myth. I think uh, uh, we should uh, go to the end and understand that prices is a mechanism of protection uh, as it could seem to us, but it is weaponry of mass destruction. It will protect everyone, those who have uh, high incomes, those who have low incomes, uh, they will buy at the same prices. Uh, so this is a uh, disintegrated mechanism which is not addressed, zero uh, uh, focus. Mechanism which was uh, uh, talked about today, I support it, it is a good mechanism, but I need, uh, think it should be uh, amended, it should be modified, modified with this uh, uh, targeted use. Uh, Naftagaz and me, we are addressing uh, the amendments to it uh, for four or five years. Monetization, this is the key thing. It is uh, uh, very simple uh, to administer mechanism, and it is understandable for consumers. Any person will become just ordinary consumer, and uh, the state should determine this consumer, give him money, uh, he will pay himself uh, and control himself whether uh, the metering was correct and then use either energy efficiency measures or reduction of his costs. Uh, this is not significant. The main thing is motivation and correct uh, relationship. This is the purpose, the goal of monetization, all the background, how it will happen. This is the other mechanism to talk about. But this is not a problem because today in our country we have 11 million of uh, retired persons, 11 million uh, of people who monthly get their subsidies. Uh, we have 34 banks who can deliver pensions, Privat Bank, Oshad Bank, Aval, and Ukr Poshta, uh, they uh, cover 96% of pensioners. This is uh, not a problem, Techni no technical problems, but communication to people, this is important. We should uh, explain to people because uh, this generation, they got used that the state should solve their problems. So this is the main challenge for them. They are not ready to uh, face uh, challenges and to face reality in general. So facing reality is a challenge, and the assistance from the state is important then. Uh, now returning to our topic, uh, <clears throat> to subsidies. Uh, there are many sins uh, which are not regulated so far at legislative and regulatory level. I will be talking about gas sector. 
because uh, I'm not uh, uh, keen in electricity uh, regulations in the uh, law on gas article 16 um, uh, sets forth uh, the definition of uh, um, vulnerable consumers because for five years we haven't had the definition who is uh, this vulnerable consumer, how to protect him and uh, how to meet uh, uh, his uh, uh, energy without criteria, principles and register. We cannot talk uh, about this vulnerable consumers. No mechanism could be introduced without definitions of terms. Uh, there will be overlap in uh, uh, po population groups, uh, I think. Uh, we have many other terms la like protected consumer. We have it in our legislation. This is even a large uh, group, of group of people. And for them, the resource of natural gas, the stock of natural bed, uh, gas should be formed uh, to provide them priority access to uh, in some um, extreme situation. Uh, we, uh, there are other aspects such as uh, uh, free choice of supply, no disconnections. Also, balance of costs and the incomes, low uh, awareness and low understanding of the rights and obligations by consumer does us uh, uh, what uh, civil society could do. In, and the state also, because the state is also responsible for this. Uh, uh, very inert uh, are groups of populations in uh, um, and, and uh, civil organizations in standing for their rights. Uh, there is no efficiency of the civil uh, uh, non-governmental organizations and our population does not see advocacy, does not see any advocacy organizations in Ukraine. So these uh, uh, activities and mechanism of monetization, this will uh, significantly add uh, to changing the relationship between the state, suppliers, and consumers. What else? Uh, I would like to add Maybe uh, I have already listed the main aspects uh, to be in focus. Uh, and now I would like uh, to address you. Here we see active people present in this hall and we want you to become these providers of correct information to other people, disseminating it, because uh, without public awareness, when uh, public does not know, uh, they do not understand what is happening. For example, the system of subsidies today, when I heard Ms. Tatiana, I am very um, uh, glad to hear so deep uh, um, level information, but when I work with uh, sovereign companies, uh, they say the information communicated by authorities is absolutely not understandable for ordinary population and communication also is uh, delayed always and it is uh, uh, not uh, uh, mm, it doesn't cover monetization of subsidies uh, 
and we want these public awareness activities to be improved and to be provided by professional companies who knows uh, correct methods uh, of public uh, uh, information communication. This would monetization will become the uh, correct step uh, which will provide people the opportunity to see the impact of reforms and it will be not three months it will be continuous practice and they, I am sure that people who will get this money and uh, will be able to dispose of this money they will not uh, they will uh, uh, make this uh, reform irreversible thank you very much for this optimistic summary um, I would like to give the floor to Alexander Shubin, the deputy head of trade unions of Ukraine Federation. Thank you. Uh, I have a presentation. I am very glad to be a part of this discussion. Very interesting stands, very interesting information after Mr. Oleksy and his uh, and previous speakers, trade unions were mentioned, and uh, when I hear my name, uh, I want to comment, but the presentation means more. So I will give my presentation and cover the position, the stand of trade unions. But several comments, so still I want to make first uh, about trade unions that they sometimes uh, stand for uh, lower prices. No, we are for balance. The policy of increasing price into the European level, it should be accompanied with the policy of income uh, increasing. Uh, because uh, how can we milk a cow if we do not feed a cow? It is impossible. Uh, when you see that your neighbor uh, goes to um, the gym, goes in for sports, and you try to, and you also, from your first visit to the gym, try to, um, lift uh, the weight of 100 kilos, you will have a negative uh, result. Uh, let's return to the topic of discussion. My presentation's name is Synchronization of Reforms in the Energy Sector and Policy of Social Protection to uh, combat energy poverty, there are uh, directives of European Parliament and Council which regulate energy poverty uh, fighting policies and the supply to and protection of uh, vulnerable uh, uh, consumers. In Ukraine, there are no definitions of energy poverty and uh, also there are different definitions of vulnerable consumers. But uh, to support Mr. Guillaume, I'd like to say that we use uh, the European European uh, Economic and Social Committee's definitions of uh, energy poverty uh, as the low level of income with low efficiency, low performance of buildings and high prices to energy sources. I'd like uh, to say that this, these are three factors uh, underlying energy poverty. Energy what is happening in Ukraine today, Ukraine has uh, approved uh, the minimum uh, uh, life uh, standard, uh, uh, which is 1,153 grivna, that is $66. And this correlates uh, but actual amount uh, which a person can uh, use to provide his life within a month uh, is four times higher. 
so during four years uh, the prices uh, uh, for natural gas uh, uh, increased uh, four times the prices uh, for electricity also increased and Ms. Ruta showed what uh, the share of expenditures is in the shares of Europeans 10 or 11 uh, percent for Ukrainians uh, uh, lowest threshold is 15 percent is 15 percent but expenditures for paying uh, for energy by Ukrainians uh, uh, 43 percent is a share in Ukrainian uh, uh, Ukrainians budget personal budget. This is the um, indicator, this is the criteria indicating that Ukrainians uh, suffer energy poverty. Uh, here we see the sources survey. It is a well-known uh, survey in center. 49.7% of Ukrainians believe that tariffs should be set for each household individually, on individual basis. 90% uh, uh, of consumers think that the uh, uh, tariff increase should be banned, uh, should be vetoed. 2.5% think that we should transfer to um, tariffs uh, which are consistent with European ones. Uh, and uh, 60, more than 60 percent of Ukrainians think that one of the main problems uh, in Ukraine is uh, prices for energy sources and tariffs uh, for utilities. Uh, and uh, expenditures are uh, for subsidies from the national budget uh, uh, is also high. In 2015, it was 12.7 billion. In 2016, 37.5 billion. In 2017, 62.9 billion. If uh, uh, in Romania, the level is 5.8 or 11 percent of national budget. In Ukraine, we have more than 4 million uh, household. Half of uh, our households, they need subsidies to pay their bills. So the policy is not correct. Is it correct that half of population of Ukraine uh, is eligible? to subsidies. What can be done to change the situation? In our point of view, let's look at the cases from the European Union countries. What are the ways to overcome energy poverty? There are two ways which were mentioned today already. The first, which is not used in Ukraine, it is intangible way. It is public awareness campaigning, which was mentioned today. Uh, it is uh, informing about the uh, informing about energy saving and energy efficiency uh, guaranteed connection to metering devices uh, uh, when uh, today it was said about opening windows uh, uh, in uh, uh, houses uh, in winter or uh, using gas stoves uh, for heating. The uh, expert forget to say that 3.5 million of households is not uh, um, uh, supplied with uh, meters and this is responsibility of service provider but the service provider fails to comply with legislation because it is uh, uh, 
uh, more beneficial for uh, the provider uh, to have metering where every consumer's uh, con consumption is uh, metered, then all losses are transparent and they cannot be written off by the service provider, by the gas supplier. So, 100% of population should be supplied with gas meters. They should be installed in every apartment. Who of those who present here, who have gas meters at the apartment? Very small percent, percentage of very high responsible consumers. Or those who are very responsible, they do not want to pay the costs which they do not incur. So we should provide incentives, economic incentives uh, to this uh, uh, high, uh, highly disciplined the consumers. And of course, bands on connections also should be present because uh, it is used very often in Ukraine. Sometimes there are grounds for such disconnections and sometimes there are no. Subsidies uh, also is a way, this is the second way, but uh, all subsidy recipients, they should be registered in correct manner. Uh, but the state provide not only direct subsidies, uh, also other types of welfare is provided, such as uh, uh, welfare services via uh, various uh, preferences. And uh, they also should be listed correctly and this is also the way to overcome energy poverty. Then norms and levels of consumption, for example, of natural gas, they are higher. Norms of supply are twice higher sometimes than in the European Union. Uh, heat consumption of two 140 kilowatts is uh, twice higher than average European indicator. And this is the result of uh, very high losses in networks and no meters at homes. And also not modernized buildings, uh, housing stock. Those buildings which are built today, they also do not uh, correspond to energy efficiency stand performance standards and at this national level uh, only 2.6 billion grivnas are provided from the budget for energy efficiency measures so energy saving measures uh, which will uh, give long-term effect, we, we, uh, they are funded only by 100, uh, by 1.6 billion uh, from the national budget. Uh, so, uh, providers uh, of uh, utility services uh, uh, the, the activities are regulated, but also the implementation of laws uh, is not uh, uh, at sound level. So uh, condominiums of uh, those uh, houses, uh, they are subject uh, the buildings uh, built before 2006, uh, they are subject to provision of warm loans. Warm loans, uh, policy of warm loans should cover population in general, but not only condominiums where buildings were built before 2006. 
also uh, the measures should be in place focused on uh, improving payments from consumers and monetization of subsidies should be implemented in full summarizing i'd like to say that in our point of view what should be done at the governmental level at the national level the expenditures for energy efficiency programs should become higher maybe uh, from the the incomes uh, from rent of uh, uh, from extraction of hydrocarbons uh, then uh, economic incentives uh, should be introduced for those uh, uh, households uh, who install meters for their own costs uh, or who uh, conduct energy efficiency measures but their own uh, costs. Then uh, also maintenance of the registers of subsidy recipients and implementation of monetization program improvement uh, of uh, price and tariff regulation program after the natural gas prices uh, have been increased in some regions by 18 percent and in some regions by 85 percent. The policy should be consolidated and also uh, participation of civil society should be uh, in place uh, in setting uh, tariffs policy. 100% uh, commercial metering of energy consumption should be in place uh, and uh, re uh, energy reforms in utilities and warm loans program should be in place uh, and the uh, uh, transparency of tariff setting policy should be ensured uh, other measures also which are focused on standardization and uh, uh, of these measures into uh, overhaul uh, integrated uh, concept uh, which consists of energy saving energy efficiency protection of vulnerable groups and increasing of incomes in the state, they are the main factors in this concept. Thank you very much. By the results of these speeches, we have developed much more common stands than different stands. This is very good start before um, the round of questions and answers from uh, our audience, I would like to give the floor for comments of the speakers and then I took questions to Alexander. 43% figure was mentioned that 43% of income of people went to communal and energy services. As I know, the income of citizens in about um, in 2018, uh, the income is uh, 1.3 billion. So you mean that uh, 500,000 uh, went to the communal services, right? This is about average data as the state uh, statistics service provide. So the average expense on uh, communal services, the income um, of citizens, this is the income of uh, common citizens and those who are uh, in the Forbes list in Ukraine, those who take big share. And uh, of course, they do not spend 43%, but if a person gets minimal salary and minimal um, pension, so uh, this may even exceed 43%. So this is about average figures. 
so this is calculated by state statistic uh, service. Uh, so I may provide you a reference where I got this data. So this is really interesting data, 43%. So if we take the lowest level, maybe of salaries, maybe this or pension, this may be 80 percent or even uh, 100 percent. But uh, I uh, get the information that this is about 16 percent if we are speaking about average figure. You've provided an analogy about this weightlifting, and uh, this is so. You should provide correct information. It's not political debate. This is expert discussion based on some facts, and these facts should be correct. Alexei, I would like that we be correct and use correct figures. If we are speaking about uh, overall income, overall profit of the population, if we are speaking about macroeconomic indicators, this is not the category that should be compared with overall um, shares and shares for the payment of communal services and housing. So let's not manipulate these categories. and. Uh, uh, as the, uh, so we were speaking about one minute to each, so we have the representative of social policy ministry. Uh, so uh, people pay about 10 percent of their income for the communal services. Uh, I would like to say that for each household we individually assess each household. This may be 5 percent, 10 percent, 15, 20 percent. We do it individually. On average, according to our data, this is not more than 10 percent. But I would like to say that this is according to the norms. If a person consumes more, then this person pays more. Dear colleagues, so we do not have much time and for this event. So uh, please raise your hands. One question, second question, first, second. First, I see that uh, we have Vasil Shila Federation of Trade Unions of Ukraine and the uh, International um, uh, Union of Trade Unions speak about the fundamental right for energy. And also, there is one more right, and uh, uh, the Committee of UNO speaks about the right of, for pure drinking water. So uh, what the right information means? And then they ask about the rights, uh, that they, we should know them. So people try to get information about the rights when the rights are violated, and this is a weird position, and also the position of Chubais, you all know him. When you are ill and you are in bed, uh, you should uh, smile because the light is not in the competence of Chubais. If um, electricity is uh, it's not costly, uh, it's okay, and uh, we should have our products competitive and we should think about the competition in the production of products and about the salary that we get in Ukraine and the cost of electricity. Liberalization in all monopolies in the EU and in the world leads to the decrease of the final um, um, uh, cost of the product. Bra uh, Brandon Martin uh, book says that when they canceled the regulation in the U.S., the prices in three years went up 1,000 percent, and they went back to regulation. And you remember uh, this because there was Schwarzenegger mentioned there. Yeah. 
So please, Federation of Trade Unions of uh, Ukraine, I would like to add a remark uh, to this discussion. According to the data of the State uh, Statistics Department, uh, as of 1st of October, it was 17 percent to the expenses of the household. But my colleague said that this is uh, um, the uh, figure for February when the prices increased for the other services, for central heating and other communal services. Thank you. Good afternoon. Vitaly Martinuk, Center of Globalism and Strategy 21. Our strategy has the project enable you in the framework of Horizon 2020, and uh, we study the um, factors that influence the behavior of the consumers. I would like to ask you, today you said that money, uh, monetization, uh, this is the stimulus for uh, consumers uh, for energy efficiency, and I highly doubt that the majority of consumers uh, and those who use subsidies, those pensioners, I uh, doubt that they will spend this money for energy efficiency. How to stimulate uh, pensioners to spend uh, the saved money for energy efficiency? Thank you. Do you have question or remark? So one minute, please. Thank you. Head of the Center of Energy Efficiency Ecological Projects. We were speaking about energy poverty, and Alexander said that this term is absent in Europe. This term is present in legislation, I mean. So uh, we didn't have it on the slide. There is a clear form what uh, uh, energy poverty is. It's a special form, specific form of poverty. So this is from the site that relates to the EU. So please do not interrupt me. I do not have much time, one minute only. So there are four criteria of uh, energy poverty, and they do not look like uh, what you said. So this is a specific form of poverty connected with a number of uh, unfavorable consequences for the respiratory and uh, heart disease, and it influences um, different policies, health uh, um, and productivity, and uh, this is not what you've said. Second, there are indicators and uh, um, indicators uh, of energy poverty in the EU. This is indebtedness in uh, um, communal payments. So please stop. No, we are speaking, but you are not speaking about this. We spent two hours, but we do not identify the process. Uh, please give me 20 seconds that uh, we speak one thing and uh, we uh, not, are not speaking about anything at all. So uh, we have two minutes to respond. Let's respect our colleagues and give our opportunities to answer. Uh, Ruta and Guillaume provided overall assessment, and we heard your position that in the EU they have the definition, and uh, our colleagues can find this definition, and everyone who wants may find this definition on the Internet. So let's give to our colleagues opportunity to answer, because we will have to leave soon from this hall. So, uh, 21st strategy, uh, century strategy question. So, I would like to answer. So, this is energy saving, and here we are speaking about it. And uh, maybe some people do not understand the difference, but energy saving, uh, this is the measures um, that are implemented. Uh, including by pensioners, and uh, behavior m can be changed. And energy efficiency, it needs more uh, resources. And uh, um, uh, there are 
can be some capital investment for some um, equip in some equipment, and this is a different matter. And the people who get subsidies, especially in multi-flat houses, they are uh, those who delay these ma measures. They are passive because they understand that the state will compensate all the expenses and they do not actively participate in those actions. About the issue, uh, about the electricity issue, uh, so you represent uh, trade unions or uh, unions of employers. Uh, yes, competitiveness is important, but there is cross-subsidy of energy price for population from uh, uh, production and uh, they have uh, higher prices, 30 percent, and there is gross subsidy of population. You've said about competitiveness, and it is bad for competitiveness, but uh, if we are speaking about energy poverty, uh, this factor is good. So we should clearly understand what we are talking about today. Do you have other comments, please? to Victor about stimulation, motivation of people who get subsidies, who get money. We are interested in international experience. Those countries that provide subsidies, they provide it in the form of money only. And uh, for the enable representatives and other organizations, and uh, I uh, participated in the round table in Rome. and. Uh, uh, they do not even understand how the system can be different. Uh, they believe uh, that uh, this subsidy should be provided only in the form of money to people. And uh, uh, we will be grateful for uh, some ideas, some algorithms, and we know that uh, 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 EIB works in this direction. and. Uh, um, it is difficult to introduce uh, energy efficiency measures, but people may save and uh, consume less and save money as well. So, for example, they may buy a toy for their grandchild, and that would be great. They would understand that uh, they can save and may get uh, something uh, and some stimulus from the state about energy efficiency. I believe that there will be state programs and I will do everything possible uh, in order that the program warm credit continued, uh, including for private uh, houses and uh, uh, there will be local prob programs and other programs in order to interest those people who uh, get the subsidies to motivate them to uh, contribute to energy efficiency measures. We should uh, make awareness campaign. We should show people those houses uh, with great energy efficiency. And Ukrainians, uh, they like to see something good from their neighbors. Uh, one more comment responding to your question about stimulation of consumers to energy efficiency and uh, uh, decrease of consumption of energy, uh, heating and gas um, concerning monetization of subsidies. Uh, so uh, so uh, subsidies should not decrease in case you consume less. So if you consume less, there is less subsidy and you have less and there is no stimulus for you to consume less. But if this is a stable figure, if you get for a long time, uh, for example, one uh, subsidy uh, and you decrease consumption and it goes uh, through several seasons, and you have a serious sum to carry out energy modernization and uh, to uh, put a metering device or to warm uh, walls, uh, that would be good. So uh, these things should be continuous and irreversible, and this will be the key to the stimulation of population. Thank you. Other comments, please, from the speakers, if you'd like. No? 
Oh, uh, Grigori, please. Dear colleagues, so the final discussion now, and uh, we now share our opinions and about the information to consumers. 100% I agree that this work is only at its early stage. I was in Lille in Fr France and uh, uh, visited the Organization for Consumers and uh, children from um, uh, school. They know about the cost of um, electricity, the cost of uh, communal services, uh, and uh, these children, they may calculate uh, uh, the household expenses and uh, uh, we were not taught to do this and uh, uh, the state previously helped us uh, in uh, paying all these expenses. About harmonization of the policy, important element should be present in the policy of the state because we may move forward and uh, uh, joining third and fourth uh, package, we should understand that Ukraine has lower income and uh, there may be situation created of social disturbance and concern and opposition to these reforms. And that's why, of course, uh, there should be harmonization of in this sector and this is uh, is important task for the expert community. And uh, Liam said about coalition of different civil organizations to provide access to energy resources. Unfortunately, I asked Alena that maybe we have some consumer organizations in this hall, but we do not have these organizations. This is a weak movement in our country and it is not able to do proper work in order to unite consumers and to analyze the price, the structure, the norms of consumption and the expenditures. And this should be done for the objectivity because there are many concerns over this and uh, several figures were mentioned and uh, uh, committees I attended and uh, also um, yesterday's resolution about the norms of consumption, where these norms come from. Uh, so maybe some affiliated structure uh, carried out some surveys uh, and studied the characteristics of uh, households in the southern region. So, um, they try to say that nine cubic meters should be the norm of consumption, and this is not correct. This should be the level of proper level of trust that these norms are fair, and people should pay for this amount. And we should also think how to support these vulnerable categories of people. So thank you. Summing up, I would like to say that I believe that. We've reached many joint ideas and they are constructive and uh, more things unite us than divide us. And uh, it is great that we didn't say uh, that we should just decrease the price. We were speaking how to protect vulnerable categories, how to search, how to identify them and how to include it into legislation, both in EU and in Ukraine, how to communicate with these people, how to bring awareness about their rights and how and where they can defend their rights. We were speaking about how important it is to meet uh, the consumption and to see this data. And this is the issue for the European Union and for Ukraine. And we were speaking about subsidies and uh, that uh, yesterday a new mechanism was launched that theoretically may provide uh, opportunities, better opportunities for people to pay for these high prices for energy resources and from the other side they will be able to save. Yes, we understand that there should be a balance between the development of the markets and the sectors, including energy sector and economic development of the country. But here we will go beyond our discussion because how to raise salaries in all the sectors and uh, 
to all age groups. This will be maybe the topic for the next discussion, and not only concerning energy sector. I thank you for your time, interest, that you are really interested in this topic, and it is really difficult. And I would like to thank our experts for this wonderful preparation and uh, for this constructive focus and uh, for the opportunity to share opinions, ideas, and proposals. Thank you very much.